The nuclear industry has a disastrous track record of accidents. First, there was Windscale in the UK, or Sellafield as it is now known. Then Three Mile Island in the US. And the really big one, Chernobyl in the Ukraine. Now, a new name enters our history. The tragedy that is Fukushima. Murphy's Law. What can go wrong, will go wrong. With nuclear power, there is no second chances. What blows up will come down over all of us. Australia sits on 40% of the world's known uranium supplies. There are currently four uranium mines operating. The Olympic Dam Mine at Roxby Downs, South Australia, owned by mining giant BHP Billiton, Rio Tinto's Ranger Mine in the Northern Territory, and two smaller mines, Beverly and Honeymoon, in South Australia. Our politicians are now telling us that nuclear power is the way to go if we are to save the planet from climate change. Nuclear power, the magic bullet that will put an end to dirty coal-fired power stations. At its national conference in 2007, Kevin Rudd and the ALP passed a motion by the narrowest of margins overturning a 25-year-old policy by the Labor Party to limit uranium mining to three mines only. The stage is now set for a radical increase of uranium mines all around Australia. Old plans have been dusted off and new mining leases are popping up like mushrooms. This is BHP Billiton's Olympic Dam mine. There's a bonanza in copper, gold, silver and uranium under that red soil down there. At the moment, it's an underground mine. But if BHP Billiton has its way, that's all going to change radically in the next few years. BHP Billiton intend to turn this, the Olympic Dam uranium mine, into the largest uranium mine in the world, creating a massive hole in the dead heart of Australia, four kilometres long by three kilometres wide by one kilometre deep. From this, they intend to extract the precious minerals in uranium. Uranium, when it occurs in nature, occurs uh, with other radioactive materials. Together in nature, in this rock that contains uranium, you'll also find thorium, radium, lead, bismuth, and polonium in radioactive forms. Radium itself is very toxic, and it's uh, no longer in a rock deep under the ground, but it pulverized and made bioavailable. Now when they mine it, they take the rock out and they only want the uranium. So all these other radioactive materials are left in the rock, uh, in the crushed rock at the mine. Tailings dump at Range Uranium Mine. Looks like any other slag heap you'd expect to get with a mine, doesn't it? But in fact, it's a time bomb. What the mining companies don't bother to tell the general public, and the pollies don't care to know, is that in fact 80% of the original radioactivity, which was once cocooned safely in nature and out of harm's way, deep in the earth, has now been brought to the surface of the earth and crushed into powder-sized particles to extract the valuable minerals. If the government gives BHP Billiton's plans, which are currently before them for approval, if they get the go-ahead, BHP Billiton intends to dump 70 million tonnes per year, a lot of it finely pulverised, into huge stacks 150 metres high, covering an area of 6,000 hectares. Now, if you can't get your head around that volume of radioactive tailings, 70 million tonnes dumped on the desert floor each year, is the equivalent of filling 
the Melbourne Cricket Ground up to the height of the goalposts four times a week. Every week for the next 100 years. The life of the mine. The dust from these finely pulverised radioactive tailings is free to blow in the wind. Some people thought it was the apocalypse. Others presumed it was bushfires. From country to city, people woke up this morning to an eerie red haze, the likes of which many had never seen before. It was all due to a dust storm. The view was spectacular, but it was also hazardous to health. Wow, that's freaky. Sydney siders woke to find their emerald city had turned an eerie burnt orange. Through there somewhere is the Opera House. Remember those red dust storms that swept across the east coast of Australia a couple of years ago? Well, just imagine the dust storms of the future, peppered with radioactive particles from the massive tailing dumps that BHP Billiton intends to produce at Roxby. Alpha-bearing radiation. And we know that alpha radiation has a 20 times increased um, impact, biological impact, than gamma radiation. So that's the big question mark, that's the big unknown. And this radiation is cumulative. Each dose you get adds to your risk of getting cancer. No radiation is safe. No radiation is safe. If you swallow or inhale radium or radon, or there are many other elements that are radioactive, they locate specifically maybe in the lung, like radon, and just irradiate a tiny volume of cells. It gets a really high dose. And the cells close by die. The ones on the periphery of that volume survive, and they can be mutated to get cancer. If the DNA in our cells is exposed to radiation, even low doses of radiation, it can have a negative impact, causing cell mutations and cancer. Scientists in the United States and Europe have recently discovered it takes much lower doses of radiation to break the double strand of the DNA. A double strand break in the DNA is generally agreed by medical scientists to be the precursor to cancer. The DNA in human cells also passes on genetic information to our children. If it's radiated, it can affect this genetic information, causing birth defects and disease. Or it can skip our children's generation and come out later in our grandchildren. Cells that are actively dividing, and you can actually see a baby grow before your very eyes, those cells are very vulnerable to being damaged by radiation. The genes that are replicating are vulnerable to being damaged by radiation, especially the regulatory genes that control the rate of cell division. That's why children are 10 to 20 times more susceptible to getting cancer than adults from radiation. And fetuses are maybe up to a thousand times more sensitive. So if you're pregnant, you're at risk. Well, a baby could be born and, and develop leukemia shortly after its birth or five years later or 10 years later. After your gene has been altered by radiation from Roxby, you won't drop dead. Doesn't work like that. It takes a long time for cancer to develop. You know, maybe 20 years later, you're sitting there and you think, geez, that's sore. And uh, you've got a red lump there. And you think, I better go to the doctor. And the doctor takes an X-ray and there's a sort of bony mass that looks a bit like a sunrise and the doctor says you've got bone cancer. You'll have to have your leg amputated. The Gulf War. In the lead up to the first Gulf War, the US government's Department of Energy found a unique way to deal with its mounting nuclear waste problem. Give it away free to the arms manufacturers. And make money from it exporting these depleted uranium weapons to 29 foreign armies. The United States is Australia's largest customer for our uranium, so it is inevitable that it's our yellow cake that is ending up on distant battlefields as depleted uranium. 
What we're seeing now in American veterans and Iraqi civilians, where depleted uranium has been used in the first and second Gulf Wars, are horrific birth defects. Children being born with their brains outside their heads, just lumps of meat. Childhood leukemias have skyrocketed. Our uranium is part of their future. Graham Creed's been following the storm front. Graham, where did all this dust come from? It was a long way away from Sydney, Juanita. In fact, it originated in South Australia and a cold front with gale force winds reached between Woomera and Lake Eyre. Now, those dust measurements up in that region were around seven times higher than the levels that you would normally record for a severe dust storm. But pollution was the highest that it has ever been recorded. Millions of tonnes of outback dust that blocked out the sun, clogged our lungs and turned Sydney into the red centre. As the crow flies, it's just 550 kilometres south to Adelaide from Olympic Dam, a thousand kilometres to downtown Melbourne and 1,650 kilometres to Sydney as the wind blows. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's the gold, copper and silver that is most valuable. BHP Bulletin can take that out of the ground and leave the uranium. We need to demand of them that they do just that. Leave the uranium in the ground. Then, maybe we'll have a future. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up.